Hi, my name is Tara Tiger Brown, and I live in Los Angeles, California. I'm the tech director at the DML Research Hub at UC Irvine. It's a day job. Um, my passionate side interests include being the chief encouragement officer at the LA Makerspace, and I was also one of the co-creators of Represent.LA, which uh, showcases all the tech startups and VCs, et cetera, in Los Angeles. Uh, my name is Sean Bonner. Uh, I live in Los Angeles as well and I'm the director of a project called SafeCast that collects and publishes environmental data, uh, primarily radiation, but we're moving into air quality as well. Uh, I also co-founded a hackerspace in Los Angeles called CrashSpace and do a lot of stuff in the hackerspace community. We've been playing with, with quadcopters and hexcopters now as a solution to help us take readings in places that are maybe a little harder to get to for people, hillsides or big fields or, or something that maybe might be contaminated or something. You know, when this opportunity came up to sort of um, maybe explore some of those ideas a little bit more. Um, I was really excited because I, I knew a, a few steps that we had already been through, so I had a little bit of a running start, and I also knew um, some, some of the hang-ups that, that we had run into, as well as uh, you know some, some solutions we'd really like to see. So if there were some things that we could work out this week, um, it would be, it would, for at least for me, it would be more than kind of just a cool project you know, to work on right now. Like I could actually take uh, what we learned here and use it uh, in practice right away on, on SafeCast. The big limitation with, with uh, you know, these, these kind of lower sort of commercial, um, commercial uh, quadcopters and hexcopters and things is that they have an incredibly short battery life and, um, you know, 15 minutes or something. Some of the much, much, much more expensive ones, you know, get up to like 45 minutes or so, but um, that's still not very long um, for some applications that you might want much more. And so that was kind of the one thing that we wanted to really think about this week is, um, is there a way that rather than powering it by a battery, we could create a tether that would still give it flexibility to move around a little bit, um, but would, you know, in a, in a closed-end area, but would essentially allow it to fly forever. And I think we, I think we solved that. Our time here has been amazing. I don't know if it's a Boulder thing, a Colorado thing, but everybody is incredibly friendly. Um, everybody's smiling and seems to be having a really good time. And uh, that has been infectious. It's really made our time here fantastic. Uh, our, I think that uh, the first week that we were here, we made a ton of progress, and that was because everybody was really open to helping us, which was great. Lindsay put us in touch with a bunch of people that she thought could um, you know, lend advice to our project. And also, she was super quick at turning around all of the orders that we kept putting in for her. I mean, it's nice to be able to just go downstairs and go into a bin and you know, take out that part that we need, so I feel like the turnaround has made it that much easier for us to have a successful project in this really compressed timeline that we had. You know, we had a fantastic time so far. Uh, you know, it was it was very cool to just be able to uh, have a rough idea of what the project was going to be and just kind of start running and see which direction it took. And having so many people around that were able to help out and and just kind of dive in and with their own ideas and sort of push it a little bit one way or another um, really helped us get much further along than I think we expected to be very quickly. The thing that I feel like for me personally has been a barrier is piloting the drone. I'm not very good at it and I don't know, I mean, it's something I want to get better at, but actually I just want to be able to, you know, have it in the air and doing cool, interesting things. And so that was some of my motivation for uh, the time that we had here at Spark Fun was, okay, how do I eliminate this need for piloting and just, you know, have the sensors on it or take awesome video and also keep it in the air longer. So, and I think a lot of that came out of just drones becoming popular at the makerspace, but also um, what Sean's been doing with SafeCast and uh, using it, you know, from a citizen science angle, which is an incredibly popular subject at the makerspace and also just in my, on the educational side of the work that I do. I started off um, using SparkFun to sort of bits and pieces for things I, I was working on, but we actually used SparkFun quite a bit with SafeCast, we just released a, uh, a kit for our main kind of workhorse radiation collecting device, and at least half the parts on it are SparkFun parts, so um, we get lots of stuff in mass all the time and get it out to people. SparkFun is very well known in the makerspace that I run. Uh, we have red boxes everywhere. I feel like it's really just ingrained in the maker DIY community. Everybody knows the red box.